You may have heard her on BBC Radio, or you may have seen her at UCB, and I'm so thrilled to have her here for the very first time. Please welcome Jen Waring. Yeah, girl! Thank you. So you guys, the first time I was auctioned off, <laughs> um, I was living in London, and I was working for a place called Crescendo, which was a children's active learning center, not unlike a gymboree. Kids would come, we would tell stories, we'd sing head, shoulders, knees, and toes 22,000 effing times a day. They would do tumbling and things, and then they would go home. It was great. Um, but unbeknownst to me, Crescendo had offered our services as part of an auction um, for a charity that I don't recall, unfortunately, but I'm sure it was great. Um, they, the winners got a night out on the town restaurant, posh hotel, and childcare provided by teachers from Crescendo. And my boss had volunteered her and I to be that childcare, which was great, because it's exactly how I wanted to spend my Friday night. Not smooching a hot British guy, not making a million dollars doing something exciting, but free babysitting, which is the same thing I did when I was 12. It's fine. So we go to the people's house, and there's two kids. One is one of our students. Her name was Pippa. She was like four-ish. And Pippa had a brother called Daniel, and he was like six-ish. And with parental approval, we took the kids to this place called Snakes and Ladders. No actual snakes. So Snakes and Ladders was like an indoor, it was in a warehouse, and it was this huge climbing slides ballroom. Like, imagine the McDonald's Play Center, but, like, extra supersized. I assume this was because it rains all the time in London, so they needed indoor shit for the kids to do. So it was nuts. It was huge. It was, like, a story tall, and the kids loved it. This was apparently their favorite place, so obviously we took them there, plus it would kill several hours. Great. My boss, Joe, took the younger one, Pippa, to the, like, little kids area, and I was left to observe Daniel in the under nines arena, which was giant. And so, you know, they had, like, tables for the parents to relax at because there's nothing more relaxing than thousands of screaming children. Um, and Daniel kicked his shoes off, went right in. Like, he was clearly a pro. In he went. And so I stood there for a while being like, yeah, all right, it's Friday. This is nice. It's for charity. It's nice. And then I heard crying. And as I looked up at the very top of this climbing frame, there was a horizontal tube with like plexiglass window, plexiglass covered window cutouts. And Daniel was sitting in the center one sobbing hysterically. I had no idea what had happened. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I didn't see anybody who worked there anywhere in sight. And you walk a really fine line being an American in London, because if you push your luck too far, then it's just because you're a douchey American. But I couldn't let a child that I was in charge of be at the top of this climbing frame sobbing. So I was like, I got no choice, man. I got to kick my shoes off. I'm going in. What I didn't take into account that was, of course, that as awesome as this was, it was made for under nines. So the tubes were ever so slightly just wider than my shoulders, forcing me to like, to like get through these tubes. I felt like, if anybody's seen that movie, the horror movie, The Descent, I felt like those ladies, like I was gonna die, the monsters were gonna get me. And I like shimmied along the first tube and then there was slides which were ever so slightly too narrow for my fat ass. So like that really hurt sliding down those. And then there was a rope climbing thing. What am I, in the army? So now I've got to climb this rope. And I haven't had core strength since I was seven. So I'm like climbing and I fall twice. Now there's British kids just staring at me like, what is she doing? And I'm horrified because I'm not clearly athletic enough to beat this stupid frame. So I have to go down another slide. And then I face an inflatable climbing wall like a rock climbing wall. I don't rock climb. Okay, shocker, but I don't. The, 
the little nubbins or whatever they're called, the foothold bits and the handhold bits are also inflatable, not made to hold an adult human, but I have to climb this wall to get to Daniel. And I, in my head now, things start going crazy. Daniel's now having like a full on meltdown. I can't hear anything, but in my head he is. I'm like, I can do this. So I try to like climb this wall, but I'm not strong enough to pull myself up this stupid wall. And my feet, I, there's no hold because it's inflatable. So they just keep giving. I probably fell three times. Now there's a crowd of kids who think I'm the greatest thing they've ever seen. At this point, if anybody's ever dealt with a little bit of mania, I start spinning. Now I'm like, oh my God, all the kids are staring at me. Daniel's going to die of starvation in the top tube. Why don't I have a boyfriend? Why don't I have children? I don't have any money. And I start to cry. <laughs> like a Looney Tune. And I can't get up. And I'm literally like, you're, oh, when you're, you have that super overwhelmed feeling and I'm sitting at the base of this inflatable wall, sobbing with six British kids staring at me, trying to figure out, assumably, how to go around my fat ass. And, the, and I'm sobbing and I look out into where the audience, I'm gonna call it the audience, but it's supposed to just be the parents are sitting. And I'm like, oh. And in front of me is Joe, Pippa, and Daniel, who's made his way down on his own, staring at me, the kids in like delight, like what is Jen doing? And Joe in full on horror that I have gone into the, the kids area. And I'm like, okay, he's out, that's great, so great. <laughs> and I manage, I have to crawl into a ballroom to climb out and as I get out, as if I'm not already mortified enough by this, the staff of Snakes and Ladders asks us to leave. <laughs> and of course, as we're leaving, all I hear behind me for, is, this, is the staff member going, she's American. And I'm like, oh, that's not why I was saving a child. <laughs> and later, as we ate Cadbury and sipped gin while the kids were sleeping, I thought to myself, I will never allow myself to be auctioned off again uh, until I did. Thank you so much. <laughs> Here comes the world. 